Okay. All right. Second Kings. Second Kings 18. 1 to 8. Who is King guy? Now, most of us know Hezekiah based of what? He was the guy that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was about to die, right? Yeah. That's what we know. Okay, let's see who is this guy. Okay, in the third year of Hosei, Hos, how do you say that name? Hosei? Hoshe? Is that how you say? Yeah. Okay, Hoshe. Okay, different people, Hoshe. Oh, Africa. Okay. The third year of Hoshi. <laughs> okay. Son of Eli. King of Israel. Ezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was how old? 25 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. He removed the high places, verse 4, and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah. And he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until these days, the people of Israel had been offering to it. So they had turned the bronze serpent that was used to make, to save them into what? An idol. He destroyed it. Okay, it was called, how do you say that word? Nehushtan. Nehushtan, yes. Five, he trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that there was none like him among all the kings of Judah after him, no, among those who were before him. So there. This guy was so different that there was no king of Judah before him that was like him. The question comes, what about David? Well, David was not the king of Judah. He was only the king of Judah for a short time. Then he became the king of Israel as a whole. Now, for those that are in the pavement that come, how many kings ruled uh, Israel as a whole? Three. Only two kings. After the third king, it was broken into Judah and Israel. Does that make sense? Why three kings? Saul, David, and who? Solomon. Once Solomon died, it was done. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. So, there was no king like him in Judah before him or after him. That he was the most righteous king of Judah, in the history of Judah. This is who this guy was. But let's continue verse 6. For he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept the commandments that the Lord commanded Moses. 
And the Lord was with him. Wherever he went out, he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and would not serve him. He struck down the Philistines as far as Gaza and his territory from Watchtower to fortified city. So, if you have time, read the entire thing. How long did this guy live? It's right there. How long did he live? 54 years. I want you to understand, King Has This guy lived only how many years? 54. Now, <laughs> when was he going to die? 39. That's when God said he would what? Die. He was what? How old? 39 years. Because we found out that God gave him how many years more? 15. So, my question to you is this. What is long life again? What is long life? The guy was 39 and the Lord said, it's fine. <laughs> then the guy begged and the Lord gave him how many years? Just 15. So he became what? 54. And it was finished. What is long life again? We've talked about it here before. What is long life? What is this long life? Here? You guys, you guys can speak. You know I like it. How long you've known the Lord? It does not matter if you've lived a hundred years. If you know the Lord at 99, you've lived how many years? One. You were alive for one year. You were dead for 99 years. This guy loved the Lord. Now, we're going to look at some of the Greek things. His father was who? Ahiza. Now, if you know anything about that guy, he was evil. He was an idol worshiper. He got, you know, he was an Igbo. <laughs> My Igbo brothers, he was not Igbo. It was uh, evil. <laughs> Let me say it again. Evil? It was what? Evil. evil. <laughs> if you had evil, you have an issue. <laughs> I'm just so joking. Okay. And if you want to know more, Second Chronicles... 28, and also Second Kings 16. You can find that about his father. His father was not good. His father was terrible. His father was terrible. Yeah. Okay. So, the thing I want to say is this. It doesn't matter what family you came from. What your father did or did not do. What your mother did or did not do. What matters is this. What are you working with? His father was not good. And you know what's so funny? His son was worse. Manasseh was the worst. <laughs> was worse. Was one of the worst kings of Judea. 
the guy's phone. Look at that in a second. Now, you can see that in Second Kings, Second Kings 21, 1 to 18. Now, here's what is interesting about his son. His son later repented. And God accepted the son back. But Judah itself was lost. His son could not change what he had done. Does that make sense? Oh, which is, you can see that Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 3, verse 12 to 13. Oh, okay. Now, before we go and look at uh, the healing of Ezekiel, let's see some of the things that he did. Open your Bible. Second Chronicles 31, verse 1 to 5. Don't worry. The guy was done from Nigeria. Those of you that I heard he bought. <laughs> and you know <laughs> this is one of the few churches where they will interrupt me while I'm preaching and it's okay I like it yeah I know I like it yeah, you should be sitting down there while you are right here Okay. One. And when all this was finished, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah and broke in pieces the pillars and cut down the ashram and broke down the high places and the altars throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And in Ephraim and Manasseh, until they had destroyed them all. Then all the people of Israel returned to their cities, every man to his possession. Two. And Ezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and of the Levites. At this point, there was none of this. Because they had fallen away from God so far that the priesthood was not even there. He took them back to the laws of Moses. Let's continue. Each according to his service, the priests and the Levites, for burnt offerings and peace offerings, to minister in the gates of the camp of the Lord, and to give thanks and praise. Three. The contribution of the king from his own possessions was for the burnt offerings. The burnt offerings of morning and evening, and the burnt offerings for the Sabbath, the new moons, and the appointed feasts, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Verse 4. And he commanded the people who lived in Jerusalem to give the portion due to the priests and the Levites, that they might give themselves to the law of the Lord. So that they would not have to work. They can focus. Five. As soon as the command was spread abroad, the people of Israel gave in what? Abundance. The first fruits of grain. The first fruits of grain. Wine, oil, honey, and of all the produce of the field, and they brought in abundantly 
the tithe of what? Everything. <coughs> so, this was something he did. Now, let's go to 20. Let's jump down. There is, if you want to have, you can read the entire Ecclesiastes 1, but just for, because we don't have the time. Thus, Ezekiel did trust Osho there, and he did what was what? Good and right and faithful before whom? Not before you, not before men, but before the Lord, his God. So that's why he did what he did. And every work he undertook in the service of the house of God and in accordance with the law and the commandments, seeking his God, he did with what? All his what? Heart. And prosper. This guy worked for God. He did not work for men. He worked for whom? God. He was a king like David. They understood that he worked for whom? God. God is the ultimate king. Now, <laughs> this one is interesting. Proverbs 25 verse 1. Some of the things this guy did. He said, these are the proverbs of, of whom? Solomon, which the men of whom? Hezekiah, king of Judea, copied or compiled or transcribed or put together. So which means this guy was not, was also compiling the word of God. So here was a man that was sold out to God fully. Not just in words, in action. In what he did. Okay, now let's get to the healing. The part that we all know. Now, let me say this. For those that don't know me well. Or those assume what I believe. Our God is a healer. I believe that 120%. The problem is the way I don't believe in arrogant prayers. Does that make sense? Don't worry, you will understand this again. I believe that God can heal anyone and it does not take much. But most times what we see in the passage is we don't know how much time someone was dealing with that issue until God healed them. So people have this assumption that the minute you have it, God should what? Heal you. It doesn't work like that. Always. How do we know? Let's look at this. Isaiah 38. Isaiah 38. 1 to 8. You can also see it in 2 Kings 19. It says, In those days, Hezekiah became what? Sick. And was at the point of death. Now, let's stop there. Now, for anyone studying the Old Testament, you know that sometimes the Old Testament happens in spans of time. Right? You know that sometimes it will say something, then it will take years. The next verse will be two years. How many of you are aware? Now, here was what I wasn't... I didn't know before. I didn't know that the guy was sick. And at the point of death. I knew 
that God said you would die. But I didn't know the guy was already headed there. He was already at the point of what? Death. Then why did God speak? Just, let's just go. Don't worry. We get that way. Was at the point of death. And Azar the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall what? Die. You shall not recover. Why would God even tell him? In scripture, there are many men, women that have died that God did not tell them. Why would God tell them when he was already about to die? Because you would think someone that is sick and is close to death is already putting his house in order. Because it Scripture does not say he goes to God. God came to him. Look at, look at the Bible. He doesn't go to God. God comes to him. Why? Why? Well, let's go to Then Ezekiel turned his face to the wall. After you this, remember this guy was sick. And prayed to the Lord and said, Please, O oh Lord, remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart. And I've done what is what? Good in your sight. Now, I have heard people talk about this thing. And they say Isaiah, uh, they say uh, Ezekiah pointed to God all that he had done. But he doesn't do that. What he tells God is that I've walked faithfully with you. Now, I just read to you guys what he did, right? He could have at least said that what he did. He said, remember, I have been what? Faithful to you. Now let's continue. Now at the beginning he said what? Three. What does he say? Please, O oh Lord. Please, O oh Lord. That is where arrogance dies. Arrogance dies meaning you understand that he is sovereign. Please. I ain't got like that. I don't have it like that. Please help me. Now, let's continue. And it says, and as a guy did what? Wept bitterly. He's asking for mercy. There is no arrogance in this prayer. He weeps at the end. Now let's continue. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Isaiah. Go and say to Ezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of your father, of David your father, it's not it doesn't say Solomon. <laughs> I love how we scripture just ignores Solomon. I go to David. It says, David your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your what? What does the Bible say? I have seen your what? Your good works. 
I have seen your good works. I have seen all that you said that you've done for me. I have seen your what? Aha! And you understand? It says, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. I see how broken hearted you are. I see how humbled you are. Now, why did God tell him what was already going to what was already going to befall him? He was about to die. Well, let's continue. Behold, I will add how many years? Fifteen years to your life. So the guy was <laughs> ah, this was my mind. was thirty nine at this point. Fifteen years means he died at what? Fifty four. He did not complain. This was a thing of what? Rejoicing. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and will defend this city. Seven, this shall be a sign from you from the Lord. If you read, if you read Second Kings, he asked for a sign. And then the Lord said this will be a sign. That the Lord will do this thing that he has promised. Behold, I will make the shadow cast by the declining sun on the dial of Hayas, which was a thing that did to measure time, not done all day. Turn back ten steps. So the sun turned back on the dial, the ten steps by which it declined. So it's almost like you pass some time. Does that make sense? It's like your clock goes back in time. You're like what? <laughs> you know, and everyone's clock goes back in time. Okay. So my question to you is this: In this instance, is God reacting? Did God react to his prayer? Is it reactionary? Okay. The reason why I ask that question is because we have a misunderstanding of who God is and what grace is. Okay. God wants you because there's still something you can do. Does that make sense? God wants you because in the sovereignty, there's something you can what? Do. Remember, the guy was about to die. Why would God warn him? Because he could pray. Because his prayer could do what? Change something. That's why God spoke. Or it's God that just quiet. Watch his guy die. And if Ezekiah had not prayed, he would have what? Died. Because in the sovereignty of God, the prayer of Ezekiah would change something. It doesn't happen to everyone. It happened to Ezekiah. Are you guys following me so far? Okay, how do we know? Well, I'm going to give you guys some examples. i give you guys passages that you can go look at yourself, right? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. God warned them. Genesis 2, 16, 17. Cain. God warned Cain. Genesis 4, 6, 7. Noah. 
Because you notice everyone I mentioned, they could change something. Now, what if Noah refused to build the, the ark? If that died, the rain was still going to fall. So, Genesis 6, Genesis 6, 11 to 22, then you have Abraham and Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. If you want, just say 18, 16 to 33, 33. Before they say I said it, but don't worry. I am not going to forget. City of Nineveh. The now the book of Jonah. Just read the entire book. Now when the word came to them, what did they do? The, the word was this that they would destroy, right? But why would God want them? Why does he not just destroy them? Oh, so they can repent. And when they repented, what did God do? He don't destroy them. If God wants you, it means you can change something. If you are not warned, sorry. Okay. Now, there's one I want to read out. Moses... Interceding for the people. Exodus 32, 7 to 14. That's one I want to, I to read. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people whom you have brought out, out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf. And have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out, up out of the land of Egypt. Now, God is seeing something that Moses cannot see. Moses is on the mountain with God, right? He doesn't know how bad this is. When Moses discovers how bad it is, what does he do? He breaks the commandments. But here he's talking like, ah, can't be that bad. <laughs> well, let's continue. Let's see. It. And the Lord said to Moses, nine. I have seen these people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone, leave me, that my wrath may burn hurt hot against them, that I may consume them, in order that I may make a great nation of whom? You. Moses, but that would destroy everyone else. 11. But Moses employed the Lord, his God, and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hurt against your people? Whom we are brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent, did he bring them out? To kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your burning anger and relent from the disaster against your people. 13. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, Jacob. Your servants, to whom you saw by your own self, you saw by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, 
And all these lands that I promised, I will give to your offspring, and they shall inherit it forever. 14. And the Lord relented from this disaster that he has spoken of, bringing on whose people? His own people. So, the God changed his mind. But did God give Moses an opportunity to, to be like Jesus, to intercede for his people? Moses is a typology. Okay. <laughs> Only one person gets the joke in this room. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. You didn't get it. You, you are not there. You are not. Okay. It's a typology of who? Christ was given the opportunity to, to intercede for them. And that's exactly what Moses did. Does God know what Moses would do? Yeah. It's the Alpha and the what? Omega. He is at the end from the what? Beginning. He knows exactly what Moses would do. He made Moses. He picked Moses. So Moses does not do anything to surprise God. That was the expectation. That Moses intercedes for the people. And he did so. <sighs> Romans 9. I want you to understand the God you serve is not a God that um, is a handbag. It's not a toy. It's not a shirt you get to put on. It's not a genie. The God you serve is the God of the universe. Okay. Guys there? What shall we say there? Now, this was after Paul just spoke about God choosing Jacob and not choosing Esau. He said in the womb, Is Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated before they were ever born. Read it. It's right there. But 14. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. This thing. For he says to Moses, I will have what? Mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have what? Compassion. So then it depends not on human will or assertion, but on God who has what? Mercy. It depends on him what he wants to do. Now you find that he says the same thing in Exodus 3 17 to 19. That's when he told Moses that I want you to know as the guy did not get 15 extra years. Because of his works. But because of God's mercy and grace, which was available to prayer in God's sovereignty. If God had never warned Hezekiah, would he have 15 years? No. It all begins with God. At the beginning, who? God. At the beginning. John 1.1, 1, 1, the word was with God. And it was what? God. Everything was made through Him. 
we demean God when we act like we're in control. You're not. Sorry. You're not. You never were. The best you can do is say yes or no. That's the best you can do. If God does not reach out to you, sorry. I'm sorry. If we have mercy on whom we will, what? Have mercy. Because God does not deal with everyone the way he deals with this guy. Why chose to? And Ezekiel understood and he was prayed. And he cried to God. Wept. A king. 39 years old. Asking God, just Lord, give me more time. Give me more time. Okay. I want you to see what is the guy said. Isaiah 38 verse 9. 38 verse 9, Isaiah. It says, and it says, a writing of Zechariah. This is important. King of Judah. After he had been sick and had what? Recovered from his sickness. Now, let jump to 17. Right there, 17. Go. Behold, it was what? For my what? Welfare for me. That I had great bitterness. But in love you had delivered my life. From the pit of destruction. For you have cast all my sins. Behind your back. Zechariah understood one thing. That, is, that we struggle to understand. He saw the grace and the goodness of God in his pain. I knew it was for his good. Read it right there. Sometimes we don't know what God is doing in your life. We don't understand it. You go, why? Ask him. Don't ask me. I don't know. Now, I want you to, to say one more thing. Huh? In those extra 15 years that his guy had, he messed up. That should tell you something. He messed up. Uh, I do not know. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Open your Bible. 32. 24 to 26. Now, at the end, God showed the mercy and grace, but he messed up. And when you go to the book of Isaiah, it actually tells you how the mess was. He was bragging. You became too puffed up. 24. In those days, Ezekiah became what? Sick. And was at the point of death. And he prayed to the Lord and he answered him and gave him a sign. We've read all that, right? 25. But Ezekiah did not make return. According to the benefit done to him. For his heart was what? Proud. And he says, Therefore wrath came upon him and Judea and Jerusalem. 26. But Hezekiah did what? Humbled himself. For the pride of his heart. Both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, of Jerusalem, 
so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them in the days of Ezekiel. After Ezekiel died, though, a wrath came. Just it was like, okay. Because, but it was the skin of Ezekiel that began the wrath of God. <sighs> so he asked for 15 years. God gave. And he found a way to mess up. After 15 years, did he, did he not die? Question. After the 15 years, did Ezekiel not die? He died. It does not matter whether he died at 39 or 54. He did, he did what? He died. The question is, what state did he die? By the grace of God, he humbled himself before he died. But we know that the extra years he was given, he became proud. Sometimes we ask for things Uh, that makes sense, but it's not always good for you. Okay. Question to you. I want you guys to answer this question by yourself. How many times has God warned you about your sin? How many times has God warned you about that sin? There's, there's that one. How many times? And are you listening? He is only warning you because you can change. One day it will be too late. When the ark was being made, he calls Noah a preacher, right? That's what uh, Hebrews calls him. So which means Noah probably tried to tell all this. To be a preacher which means you preach. But he didn't listen. No, he did die. Yes, God does not care about quantity. He cares about Quality. His word does not change because many people don't want to believe it. Nope. Jesus did not change one word of God because he wanted to put him on the cross. So, are you humbling yourself by dying to yourself? Or, guess what? Or are you, uh, are you holding on to who you think you are? And you're ignoring the voice of God. One thing to know is this. If God is speaking to you, about the sin, you are Ezekiah at the point of death. The grace of God has opened the door. God is screaming to you through Isaiah, through his word, change. Come back. It's not too late. Ask the Lord for life. Ask me for life. Let us pray. Pray, ask the Lord that when he speaks, you will listen. You will listen. There is no point if you end up in hell. There is no point to any of this. If your destination is still hell, ask God that, Lord, when you call out, I will listen. 
I will listen to the warning that you're given. I will change, Lord. Help me to change. Can refuse to change. God won't came. Sin is by the door. It's knocking. What he wants to do is take control over you. Don't let it. Cain would not listen. As the Lord, Lord help me to listen. Help me to listen. That I'll be responsive to your word. That I'll be responsive to your voice. Help me to have the heart of the 39 year old guy that wept, that weep over my sin, that I will weep over my sin. I will weep. Lord, help me not to think that what I've done is good enough. Help me to know. That is a thing of grace. If the Lord has called out to you, He has shown you mercy. There are some people we not get. Because He has said He will show mercy to whom He will show mercy. Compassion to whom He will. He does not have to show any of us mercy or compassion. For He has chosen to. So if the Lord is calling you, come out from darkness. But wherever you are, come out from darkness. That you will not die. As the guy was close to death, you will not die. But you will live. Father, we thank you. We give glory. We exalt you for your word. It's so simple. But it has so much life in it. Help us to go back to study. That we'll see your word even more. A life in us. That you will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.